8. Farts. I'll say it again. Farts. Get the giggles out of your system now because we're going to be talking about them for the next 15 minutes or so. And there are plenty of very good, very important, very scientific things about farts. For, ex- for instance, did you know that only 1% of the gas expelled actually smells bad? Dr. Matt Barton and doc- Dr. Mike Todorovic from Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike's medical podcast are here to help us sift through it all. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about using that word <laughs> in this context. Gentlemen, if you do have a question, feel free to ask away, 1300 222 612. Let's start with the simple stuff, gents. Why do we fart? Um, well, it's the utility of farting has changed since COVID. So, um, what? Yeah, okay. Well, before COVID, um, when we would fart in public, we'd cough beforehand to cover it up. <laughs> And since COVID, <laughs> so since COVID, we um, yeah fart to cover up a cough. <laughs> oh yes, mm. it's funny because it's true. Um, but why does the human body uh, yeah, need okay. to expel in this way? So I'll give a an, an animal example sure. of the importance of farting. So there's a a type of fish in Mexico that eats a lot of algae. And in summer, the way that this algae reacts in the heat, it releases a lot of gas. And so as the fish is eating a lot of this algae, it's producing a lot of gas in its intestinal tract. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't fart, it will start to float to the top and then it it gets eaten by birds or explodes. And so similar to us, we probably produce two litres of air in our guts per day. And if we didn't expel it, it would cause not only a lot of discomfort, but probably it would be a risk of um, perforating or rupture in our bowel, which is not something you'd want to have happen. Mm. So it's really something you need to do to relieve any kind of discomfort. So we have to. Yeah, you have to. We have to. And yet we're not allowed to in polite company. That feels a bit strange to me. Unless unless you're a soldier in World War II. So I I was reading a a report today. So this is a a peer-reviewed published... Uh, paper about farting on the front line is actually the name of the paper. And An academic paper. Yeah, soldiers in World War II would, in the dugouts, they would fart to play games. So uh, there was there was one <laughs> one soldier, his name was Pipe, and he was known as was. the <laughs> fart master. And he would supposedly be able to fart longer and louder than any other soldier. And one soldier came up to challenge him. This is actually in a report written by a soldier in World War II saying a soldier came up to challenge him and what ended up happening was that soldier had to retreat and defecate outside. <laughs> Surely making an explosive sound in a, in a trench is not a great well, idea. Part of the game was to try and make farts sound like the guns that they were shooting. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is, again, what they were writing down. Yeah. <sighs> so not everyone's ashamed of it. If, yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess you do what you Pass need to time. do to keep yeah to mm. keep yourself amused in that sort of situation. So, what are they actually made up of? So, f- farts are made up of around about five to six different gases predominantly. So, about sixty percent is nitrogen, and twenty one percent or twenty percent is hydrogen. Nine percent is carbon dioxide. Seven percent is methane, and four percent is oxygen. So, the sixty percent nitrogen and the four percent oxygen. We get that simply by swallowing or sucking in the air that we're breathing. So obviously when we take a breath in, that should go into our lungs and then back out again. But sometimes it goes into our esophagus and into our stomach. Most of that we burp or belch out, but the rest of it can continue to move through the gastrointestinal tract. The rest of those gases like carbon dioxide and methane, for example, and hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide, that's produced by the gut bacteria. Um, Interestingly, you produce a bunch of acid in your stomach and that acid needs to get neutralised by the time it moves into your intestines, otherwise it'll start to digest the the wall of your bowel. And so the bowel produces basically a chemical that neutralises the acid called bicarbonate. But the product of taking the acid and the bicarbonate and neutralising it is the production of carbon dioxide, which again is a gas. Mentos in a Coke bottle? Yes, exactly right. That's exactly what happens. Exactly right. And so this needs to, again, either be belched out, burped out, or it continues to the tract. And a lot of it can actually be absorbed from the gut into the bloodstream and then move from the bloodstream to the lungs where it can be exhaled. No. Yeah, so the bacteria in our gut... uh, Well... It's a good theory because um, this is possibly 
one of the reasons why your farts to you don't smell as bad as <laughs> others. <laughs> because the, the thought is, because you're, particularly the hydrogen sulfide, which is the stinky part, because that's going into your blood from your bowel. Right. And it you're expelling like home. it. You're, exp- <laughs> <laughs> you're expelling it out through your mouth and nose that you're. Um, Desensitizing. Yeah, your receptors in your nose that pick up scent become desensitized. So you <sighs> fart and say, that doesn't smell too bad, and then you got 12 people behind you Passed down out. on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's threatening to leave me, <laughs> allegedly. Um, <laughs> if you have a question, if you do, this is something that we all do. I know we're laughing about it. I know some of you are probably yelling at the radio right now saying, oh, my gosh, the ABC is talking about this. Well, yes, because we're all humans. It's a bodily function. It's a thing that happens. Ain't no getting around it. So 1300 222 612 is the number if you have a question or you can SMS if you're feeling a little shy. <laughs> Bit of a silent one. Zero four six seven nine double two six twelve is the number if you'd like to do that. So this is what I really want to know the answer to. So when we smell them, are we actually smelling poo particles? Are Sim- we inhaling someone yeah. else's feces? Simple, simple response. Yes. So the way our oh, sense of smell works is similar to taste. It's just molecules will jump onto receptors, new re- uh, nerve receptors, and that's picked up as a sensation. So all these gases that Mike spoke about that comes out the back end would jump onto the, your um, nose or in your nose and the, and the neurons in your nose would pick up that and therefore you'd smell it. So that's yes. Now, Dr. Carl, everyone knows Dr. Carl. Yes. He was asked a question some time ago by a scrub nurse whether if she farted in surgery whether that would break the sterility of the surgery because it's all sterile oh, in there. Yeah. So Dr. Carl wasn't That's sure. Question. It's fair. Yeah. He wasn't, Dr. Carl wasn't sure, but he had a listener who was a microbiologist who did an experiment. So <laughs> basically what he did was he got a Petri dish and he farted onto it with his pants on and then another Petri dish he farted on with his, with his pants off. And so then... What, what happens to the Petri dish? All for petri- science. All for science. It's got a PhD. <laughs> to, see, to see what grew on the Petri dish. Pretty much nothing grew on the one with the pants on, but with the pants off, not only some bacteria from the colon were on there, oh. but also some bacteria around the skin of the rectum was... And there was actually a splatter zone. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Good God. So um, if you're going to pass wind, have pants on. And don't operate naked. Yeah, I think yeah, that's an important that's, think distinction important. we should make for the medical professions <laughs> listening. If you're wondering, don't. Catherine has a question. She's in Townsville. Hello, Catherine. Hello. What would you like to ask? Well, many years ago, I on the Mike Walsh show, they were talking about farts, but they didn't say the word back in those days. No. And they said the average person does an average of 14 farts a day. I want to know, if I only do 10 today, am I allowed to do 18 tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> if you hold them in, yes. <laughs> that's a uh, great question. And that's actually right. So uh, around about 14 farts plus or minus four or five per day is the average amount of farts somebody produces. That's Obviously, what you ingest can change that. And also the type of gut bacteria you have can change that as well. So the the... The basic premise is that you ingest three major types of macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. By the time it gets to your colon, they should be broken down into their smallest units to be absorbed into the bloodstream and we can use it for energy or build the body or whatever it may be. But a certain percentage of these foods aren't broken down sufficiently and by the time it gets to the colon or the large bowel, the bacteria is there to gobble it up. And so depending on what it is, they can ferment it and produce byproducts. And a lot of this byproducts is gas. So some people with IBS, for example, irritable bowel syndrome, they can produce a lot of gas with foods that they eat. And that gas results in bloating and pain, for example, and sometimes can change the the type of bowel movement that they have. And a lot of this has to do with uh, what's called FODMAP foods. So uh, these are small carbohydrates that are fermentable mostly indigestible, and the bacteria love to gobble them up quickly and produce a whole bunch of gas. And for people with IBS, they tend to reduce the FODMAPs, um, so they're monosaccharides, disaccharides, again, fermentable oligosaccharides, carbohydrates, basically. And to reduce these reduces the gas. So, yeah, what, what you eat definitely changes how much you fart and also the odour of the fart too. So proteins, 
um, are made up of amino acids and some of these have sulfites associated with them and that can result in the hydrogen sulfide that's produced and that's the smelly farts that you get. So most of the time, in some vegetables have these sulfites as well, like asparagus and broccoli and things like that. So that's usually what gives the smell. So if a person, a random person... <laughs> <laughs> no one in this room. <laughs> uh, ...wanted to know whether they were healthy, is passing more wind or less wind a... a tell you whether were you're healthy or the smell? Like, is there a way, if, it, if, you, if a doctor sat down with you and took a... a reading, I don't know how you would do that, um, would they be able to tell whether your gut is healthy or not by what you are emitting? So a lot of things are uh, compared to normal. So if your uh, bowel motions have changed or maybe your, your the amount of times you fart or the smell of the fart has changed, that can be a good indication that something's happening within the gut itself. Um, but if you've always had smelly farts, for example, it's probably mostly just the food that you're eating. So not necessarily, not by itself. However, they are doing experiments now to try and take um, the gases from flatulence and also from burps and use those as tests for certain diseases and disorders. Right. And so I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple of years' time you'll just have to burp into a tube or fart into a tube and then they can tell you something important about your health. <laughs> Very different from a COVID test. Yes. <laughs> very, very different indeed. How does your... This just feels very strange to be talking about uh, on the radio, but you're quite right. It is a normal, everyday thing. Everyone does it. How does your bottom know the difference between a fart and a poo? Um, well, if you go from your anus, so that's the kind of the out, outer outer ring. Don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> that's you, the line. <laughs> well, talking of a line, there is it's actually a line... It that we need to talk about. So if you go kind of up about 10 centimetres, there is actually a line Stop. in your rectum, which they call a dentate line, okay? Now, this is a meeting point between kind of the way that your bowel developed. So okay. below that line, so towards your rectum, sorry, between towards your anus side, that has the same kind of sensory receptors as your skin. Whereas on the other side, the mouth side, it has the same receptors as your rest of your intestine. So at the point above the line, all that your body knows is there's something coming down. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's distending. So something's coming, but below the line, it's the same as your skin. So just like the top of your hand, if you were to blow on it, you would know there's wind. If you were to pour water on it, you would know it's a liquid. If you were to I don't know, drop a golf ball on it, you would know it's a hard thing. <laughs> so um, it's that area that picks up whether it's um, wind, a fart, and you, you're right to go, or whether it's Careful. a faeces, you better go to the toilet, or if it's a liquid, not sure. Mm. Now, the importance of this from a surgeon's standpoint, standpoint, and I did have a conversation with a general surgeon about this, is when they do colorectal surgery, particularly for cancer, they have to ensure the best they can to retain that amount of skin mm -hmm. or that below the, the line. Because if you remove it, then the patient will not know whether it's a feces or a fart or diarrhea, which, you know, if you're doing it 14 times a day, yeah, it's That'll debilitating. Very yeah. inconvenient. Yeah. Now, finally, gentlemen, I'm usually the one asking the questions and you're going to turn the tables on me ever so slightly. You have a quiz for me? Quick quiz. Sure. So I'm going to ask you uh, five animals and I want you to tell me whether they fart or not. <laughs> Simple. Okay. Kangaroos, do they fart? Yes. Correct. Octopus or octopuses? Yes. No. Oh. Ah. Mm. Millipedes? Surely not. Yes. Oh. But they probably can't smell it because their head's probably too far away. Coral snake. <laughs> yes, yeah, snake wood, feral beast. Yeah. Yep. Birds. Oh. Uh, yes. No. What? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I didn't actually figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will add Next to the, week. <laughs> with the coral snake, yeah. it, it's got a, a, a popping cloaca. So what it does with its farts, it will actually suck air backwards up it and then pop it out to scare its predator away. Surely it's got enough going on that's scary without <laughs> no. having that little thing tied on the end. Mm. Venom there you at go. one you end, can, farts at the other. You can use that excuse next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's an early warning system and I'm Popping a snake. That's fantastic. Gentlemen, it has <laughs> been a little confusing, but, uh, oh, oh gosh, hang on, we do have a question for you. Okay, I, 
someone has and they haven't left their name uh, I'm passing extremely stinky wind at the moment it smells like methane or sulfur it's bad what's causing it is it fruit in my smoothies basically am I okay don't know you'll have to go see your GP I'd say but as you said something has changed so yes if something's changed worth looking into. it's always worth having a chat uh, chat with your GP Okay, Dr. Matt Barton and Dr. Mike Todorovic from Dr. Matt and Dr. Mike's uh, medical podcast. Dr. Michael is a neuroscientist for Griffith Institute of Drug Discovery and Menzies Health Institute. And Dr. Matthew Barton is a bioscience senior lecturer in the School of Nursery and Midwifery and a research member of the Menzies Health Institute, Queensland. So they know of what they speak. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank Thank you. you.